let's just go right into the uh, Juan Soto conversation here. I know you got to catch the back end of what we were talking about. What do you think are the chances that he gets dealt and any other teams that come to mind, obviously in the New York area, Yankees fans and Mets fans to an extent are freaking out about it? I do expect that he is going to get traded. And the Padres, I'm sure would love to keep him, but the finances are one thing and their need for starting pitching is another. They have lost a lot of pitchers, period, from their staff, including Hayter at the back end of their bullpen. So it seems to me that flipping him would be the way to go, both from a financial perspective, which we've written about, and even a baseball perspective. Obviously, you're better with Juan Soto than without him, but if you can turn him into three or four players that can help you down the line, that might be the way to go. The one point I wanted to make regarding an extension, and let's say if the Yankees trade for him, is that Soto is represented by Scott Boris. Scott Boris' clients generally do not sign extensions. He encourages them to go to the open market and to establish their value there. That is almost always the case with Boris' clients. There are exceptions, but I don't expect Soto to be one of them. And keep in mind, as you guys mentioned, the 440 is out there. He turned that down. So with regard to waiting to trade for him and then waiting to sign him until after Otani. I don't know that any of that really applies because he's not going to sign, in my opinion. If the Yankees throw $500 million at him, okay, maybe. But if you're Scott Boris and the Yankees throw $500 million at him without the benefit of free agency, why not just wait for free agency? So that part of it, I don't see happening. If you trade for Juan Soto, you're getting him for one year. Uh, hey, Ken. So w- with that said, like, that obviously limits a ton of teams, right? Who will actually go after him. I would expect that to be the case, Danny. And you're right. A $30 million arbitration number is a huge number. Now it's one year and teams can take it for one year. And it could be guys that maybe San Diego doesn't get a deal that it feels is worthy of Juan Soto. And they feel like, let's just keep him. We can revisit this at the deadline. And if not, then If we don't trade him, then we can even give him a qualifying offer. Scott, I heard you say you think they'll get three quarters of what they gave up. I don't believe that's going to be the case. Potential free agent with a $30 million arbitration number is not nearly the same as a guy with two plus years remaining of club control. So it's going to be a really interesting one, guys, but it's also going to be telling to see what San Diego does here. Their financial problems are not inconsequential. They're real. And the question is, how do you go about addressing them? So Ken, I'll I'll try and see if maybe I can pry at least say 50% of a return out of you. And here's my reasoning. I just think it's scarcity. Looking at the market and it looks like Cody Bellinger is going to get a boatload of money. A year ago, you could have gotten him on a one-year contract for not a lot of money. I think the number on the pillow contract was maybe 18, something like that. For one year, Cody Bellinger I would say realistically now he's getting at least in the probably 150 mil plus range. So I think Juan Soto is a better player. I'd rather have Juan Soto for one season than Cody Bellinger. I know you can make a case it's close with the base running and the defense that Cody provides, but I, the consistency of, of Juan Soto as an offensive player, I, I don't think it's close. So I think some teams could look at him and say, hey, this is by far the best available player. We're going to have to give up prospects and it's one season for us. Do you think that the lack of offensive options for teams would up the price enough for them? That's a great point, Scott. And you're certainly right that the market for position players this year in free agency is extremely thin. It's basically Otani. He's one. And yes, Cody Bellinger and then Matt Chapman. But Matt Chapman is not the offensive player that Bellinger is. So With that in mind, maybe San Diego does better than I'm thinking they're going to do. It's certainly possible. But when we talk about the deal that they made for Soto and who they gave up, C.J. Abrams, Mackenzie Gore, Robert Wood, one of the best prospects in the game, they gave up a ton. Those were just three of the names. There were, I believe, six in all. So it's going to be hard for them to recoup even a strong percentage of that value given what they traded to Washington to get Soto with, again, two plus years of control remaining. That was a good deal at the time in terms of getting at least a player under club control for quite some time. 
Now it's a little bit of a different story because of the high Arbor number and because of the lack of club control beyond this season.